The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Monday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you pick things up slightly in the positive. You got the S&P futures quite a week. Last week, we closed at near record territory, and you're talking about an S&P that picks things up positive by two points, basically flat. We were down pre-market in the overnight session to about 5,090. We're positive a bit. We got a lot of economic data this week. Probably the biggest data point of them all would be Thursday for the PCE, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. We'll go over that in a moment. The mic is cutting out, huh? Let's see if we're doing it. Let's, let's see if that's working. Are we better? Let me know, all right? Uh, NASDAQ 100 this morning, up about 17 points. Must have been sitting on my mic there. Uh, up 17 points, NASDAQ 100, just above 18,000. 18,008, you got NVIDIA, up like another percent today. Doesn't stop for NVIDIA shares. Dow, actually within a reach of 40,000. We haven't started in many days where you'd say to yourself, reasonably, the Dow could get to 40,000 today. You're only about 2% away from that price target. You never know in this type of market to the upside. The Dow, basically flat this morning. 39,192, and you get the Russell in the red this morning. You see a little bit of volatility right now since 8 a.m., but still in the red by about two points on the Russell. Bitcoin, up $140, 51,890. You got crude right now. We made it to 75.84 in the pre-market. We're trading at 76.59. Crude just kind of bouncing off that $78 price point that's been an area of resistance to the upside for the price of crude. Gold had quite an acceleration on Friday up to 2053. You're giving up some of that action this morning. As you can see, though, just chopping around in about a $5 range for gold overnight. You close out yesterday, excuse me, Sunday off, uh, Friday, you close out at just above 2045. And you're trading right now at 2040, jumping around between 2040 and 2045. You got to jump to notes and bonds. You see the acceleration on Friday. We were at 109.09 on Friday. You made it above 110. An absolutely remarkable move. And you're talking about you go from above 4.3. We're at an easy four and a quarter percent, four and a quarter percent. Easy math uh, as yields pull back a bit on that little bit higher price there on the 10 year. And we jump around to the dollar index. And as you'd expect, when you get a sliding yield, you get a weaker dollar, the dollar at 307 excuse me, 103.76, the dollar right now down about 17 ticks, and we jump over to the VIX this morning. Volatility index with a 13 handle. Uh, we come in basically flat, and yet again, you get an elevated VIX, right? Markets are in the positive. The VIX is predicated off the S&P, recall, okay? We were lower pre-market in the S&Ps, so it would make sense you had a slightly elevated VIX. We were at 13.64 in the final hour of trading on Friday, and we're sitting at about 14. So again, we come into the week, with a flat to positive market right now, S&P is up by one, NASDAQ 100 up by 16, Dow and Russell both negative by two, and the VIX slightly elevated, all things considered though, sitting at a relatively low 14 on this volatility index. Now I say relatively low, but I don't even have to put lines on this chart to show you that we're getting higher highs and higher lows in the VIX. Right. Look at where we're dipping down to. The market's at 5102, folks. 5102. We've tackled some of the biggest earnings events that we needed to in terms of the FANG, Magnificent 7, NVIDIA last week, probably the main event of the whole earnings cycle. And you have a VIX that refuses to get down to anything that we were at, whether it was late last year at an 11 handle. Again, about New Year's Eve at a 12. January 11th, you got to 1235. January 24th, you got to 1241. February 9th, you're only talking about 17 days ago, we were at 1269, and somehow we're sitting at about 14 with the S&Ps at 5103. Not alarming, but something you do want to keep track of because it is slightly indicative of the fact that at these high, lofty levels of the S&P, 
you could be seeing a little bit of insurance premium, people taking a little bit of insurance possibly on the idea that, yeah, we've had quite a run to the upside. Putting the S&P back on a weekly basis, we have been talking about this as well. 5122, that's your A to B. It's no longer a projection. I've had that on the chart for a few weeks, man. We got there probably faster than I imagined right out of the gate this year. Where this really started to show up on my charts was when you got that gap above the B points in the S&Ps, right? Your A to B leg, it's a nice simple 1,000 points. That's why I liked it so much, especially in the S&Ps. You pull back a 50% retracement of what the market did from, and I took 3,600, which was basically the lows it had for about a month. I did not take the 3,502, which was a tail on, I think that was one morning or one day, if I recall correctly, intraday. 3,600, a nice simple round number. The highs made in July, 4,634. We call it 4,600. You got about a thousand point run off of the lows, which were 4,122. And we got within a point and a half, man, of that price point. 51.2350. The highs last week, and we're trading just off that price level. All right, back to yields. You jump to the 10-year. Let's put it on a daily as we kick things off. So back to a 15-minute to kind of show the action on Friday, right? You dip to a low of 109.09. Since that, we've had a little bit higher price. You make it all the way above 110. We've backed off a bit. You're technically flat on the session right now for the 10-year, but I wanted to illustrate that bounce off that lower price there. Because we get some pretty important data. Thursday, we're going to get the PCE, which is the personal consumption expenditure. We'll get into some of those numbers after this first break in terms of what the market is expecting. They're pretty hot numbers in terms of what the market is looking for. Okay. But you got to recall that the Fed is saying that basically everybody on board is, is, is on board with the idea that we're going to get cuts sometime this year. We're only in February. We're about to be in March, though. Excuse me. And we're still sitting with yields of 4.3 percent on the 10 year. We were dealing with a federal funds overnight lending rate of five and a half, almost five and a quarter to five and a half percent. If you do get a pullback in price. Excuse me, uh, an elevation of price in terms of higher price. OK, and that's why I jumped to the 15 minute here, because that was quite a bounce, man, off of those lows. One oh nine oh nine. You trade to higher price. You know, yes, we have a little bit of a pullback going on right now, but just since the lows that we were at on Friday morning, and I'm spending a little bit of time on yields this morning, but it's going to be an important one as we go forward right now, as we are now over the earnings story, I would say. Everything was, you know, can can the Magnificent Seven deliver the earnings that are priced into the, their equities? Not only did they deliver, they beat Almost across the board. Almost couldn't have imagined a better earnings season capped off by NVIDIA. Now, we still got many companies coming out, okay? But that was the, the key factor, obviously. Now, we've made it through that. What do we shift to? Well, maybe we shift to the rates discussion yet again, right? March 20th is the next meeting for the Federal Reserve. And yes, we have a little bit of a pullback. But just since Friday, we're barely coming into the 3A2 right now. 109.26, we have the 10-year, now actually negative, we have the 10-year yield when I came on the air, four and a quarter percent. We're sitting at 4.26, so up one basis point. But nonetheless, okay, going back to the longer-term picture, here is where we currently sit. Taking off some of these shorters, you can't even see, right? Here's where we currently sit, folks, okay? We've been at this price level you're talking about for a period of, what, 16 months? 16 months, almost 17 months. We're sitting at the same exact price point, which yields a 10 year of 4.25 percent. All right, we'll be right back. We got to go to break. If folks, you're looking tuned. for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now flat. You're looking at a NASDAQ 100, barely in the positive, Dow and the Russell, barely in the red. We jump over to NVIDIA shares, as I mentioned, right? This, the fun's not ending just yet, folks. Uh, up a bit in the pre-market, up another $8. That's a 1% pop, $8 on NVIDIA. You say, well, that's not that much. It's not that much for how it's been chopping around. Even from the open on Friday, you open at 8.05, you trade up $20. You trade down almost $50, $50. You finish the session at about 790, and you see a little bit of volatility in pre-market. $50 this thing traded from highs to lows, and that's not weakness. That's just volatility as the market struggles to find where supply equals demand and where the true market cap. And remember, we talked about, let's see if it's this week as well. I'm sure it is because it only adjusts for earnings. They got a very even round number of 2.5 billion shares outstanding, folks. So the simple math, 2.5 billion shares, they have to get to $800 on the dot to reach that two trillion mark, they are ahead of Amazon and Google, among many other companies, of course, in terms of size of company. Amazon shares, they're gonna open by about a dollar as well, as the NASDAQ 100 is in the green. Amazon at 176, you're gonna be above where you were last week on Amazon. Apple shares, quite a slide for them from Friday. You're gonna open just slightly in the red for Apple at 182.36. Was listening to Bloomberg earlier this morning, they were in a conversation about Apple and wearables. It is pretty remarkable where the future is going, man. I do not have a Vision Pro. I don't plan on getting a Vision Pro anytime soon. But I think it was Dan Ives on there. Um, they were just quoting, you know, interviews of the past, talking about Apple. They were talking about one of their analysts with Apple. And he was saying, you know, the Vision Pro is probably going to look something like glasses. And it's probably going to be available for 1500 bucks in two years. That's might be pushing it, man. Three years, four years, maybe five years. You know, you go out five years, man. Very difficult to imagine where technology is going to be in five years. And some of some of the videos from those Vision Pros, the augmented reality, the augmented reality, not virtual reality, folks. It is the augmented reality to hang your hats on in terms of where that market is going. Adding, augmenting 
reality, right, with technology is where the future is going, not the virtual aspect of things. Nonetheless, Google shares, you're going to be down about a buck, buck 50 to 143.82. And as I mentioned, so talking about a couple things going on in the market, we get PCE on Thursday, okay, jumping into some of these numbers that we're talking about for PCE here. Looking ahead to Thursday's economic data, headline and core PCE are both set to come in at a hot 0.4% month over month pace. 0.4% month over month annualized is 4.8%. And that's not exactly how things break down, but it's a quick guide that if things go exactly how they went over the last 30 days, you multiply it times 12, you're approaching 5% inflation. And that is headline and core, both 0.4 versus 0.2 for the prior month. Now, driven in large part by residual seasonality. How do you break down residual seasonality? Right. Despite the high monthly reading, base effects will likely allow annual core inflation to edge down to 2.8 percent in January versus 2.9 the prior and continue to fall to 2.5 percent or lower by mid year. Um, and that is some chief economist, Bloomberg chief economist, potentially. Yeah. He had some Fed speak last week. He had New York President John Williams on Friday that the economy's headed in the right direction and it will likely be appropriate to cut rates later this year. That's all they've really signed on to, right? That's all that Chairman Powell has ever really embraced is that everybody on the committee is on board, that they feel it will be appropriate at some time this year to begin cutting, but when that will be, we're not quite comfortable yet. Well, you get one data point today, Thursday, uh, excuse me, this week, Thursday, with the PCE Thursday morning. And as you see, they're looking for hot numbers, man, 0.4% on a monthly basis, on the core, and on the headline. We jump back to crude with that in mind. Now, there's a lot more going on than crude. But crude, bumping up against the upper boundary line in terms of that $78 price point, right? Pretty critical area. And again, we trade lower from that. This is the daily. You see the rejection on Friday. So that'll help things out. If you break above that area, be careful, man, because as you can see, we're going back to basically November 7th which is pretty remarkable that you're talking about what? December, January, excuse me. Yeah, December, January, February, and now March. Almost four straight months. That $78 price point, one, two, three, in this last kind of area. We were up there for almost a period of two weeks from February 13th to re the rejection Friday, 10 days later, February 23rd. So keep your eye on crude as well, because right now it's not a huge part of that inflation story, but man, you know, you start getting any type of an acceleration above $78, and that's really going to add to things. Chairman Powell is probably sipping his Monday morning coffee saying, yeah, we can see crude down 15 pennies. We'll take that as, a, as, as an assistant to the battle of inflation. Okay, what else we got going on? They talk about in the same article, and this is just a market wrap up in the morning on Bloomberg, but they're talking about the breadth of the economy, and it would make sense with the run that these tech companies have had. Goldman said markets have room to extend gains beyond their record highs if the economic outlook remains upbeat and investors pour money into recent laggards. Is that what's going to happen? You want to be careful with that aspect of things, folks. Because if that's the case, then just take all your money from the Magnificent Seven and dump it into the Russell 2000, right? But if somebody told you to do that right now, wouldn't the spikes on your back go up? I'm pretty sure they'd go up. Wouldn't this, you know, nobody knows what the future holds. Okay, that may be the play, potentially. But boy, it's a risky play to take your money out of the winners that are crushing everything and put it into the equities that have vastly underperformed for some time. You look at the market breadth, the weakest since 2009. Shouldn't be surprising. Okay, and this is the S&P 500 price relative to the S&P equal weighted index. And you can see the run it ha it's had in terms of the ratio. And you can see how that run has really accelerated basically from those October lows. NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, many companies. Even you look at like a company like Salesforce, right? Look at this company, Salesforce, man. October, you're trading at 193. You just traded 298. You're up 50% from the October low for Salesforce. You take a look in a longer term time frame. Right near the highs of 311 down to 126. Absolutely remarkable, man. 
As this market slides to slightly red with five minutes left to go until the opening bell, we jump around to the 10 year right now. The 10 year basically flat. We're sitting at a 10 year yield just above four and a quarter percent right now as we come into the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. Thursday, PCE, when we went over at 0.4 percent. Look for that number on Thursday morning. And we also get fourth quarter GDP. I think that number might be Wednesday. Yeah, we'll get into it after the bell, but we get fourth quarter GDP as well. I think that number comes out on Wednesday. There it is. Yes, fourth quarter U.S. GDP numbers due Wednesday. There you go. And we get some comments from a host of central bank officials for clues on the path for interest rates. I don't think you're going to get any clues, folks. You've gotten all the clues that you're going to get. We got a couple meetings at least. We got a bunch of data in between them. You got March 20th, which is completely off the table. And we see where we go from there. And we got the S&P sitting at about 5,100 right now as we come into the opening bell. And on a weekly basis, right, we got two red bars since October. It's about to be March. Two red bars from October. It's about to be March. If you are holding through this, you got to accept the fact that you might get a consolidation or a pullback. Even a 382 pullback right now is almost 400 points in the S&P this run. We got a thousand point run in the S&P. You've ran 25% over a period of about four months, and we've had two red weeks over four months. So prepare yourself for a little bit of volatility, at least in the near term. We'll see where we go for the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for three minutes. We've got a lot to talk about. We'll take a look at some other ready equities. to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P barely in the positive by one point. NASDAQ 100 leading the way as usual, up by 24 points. NVIDIA giving that a boost to a certain degree, right? NVIDIA up another one and a quarter percent this morning. You got the Dow and the Russell slightly in the red right now. You jump over to Google shares down by 1.1 percent. We jump over to Apple shares. They're basically flat at 182.33. Amazon shares, they give back some of those gains they had pre-market. You're still up by about two tenths percent right now for Amazon. You jump over to Tesla, up one percent. And you jump over to Meta shares, basically flat this morning at 483.61. You jump back to Apple. My dad had a great question. Uh, it's in augmented versus virtual, right? What exactly is that difference? And it's it's something you're going to understand for sure. The Vision Pro is what's going to change the world is going to be augmented reality, which is if you think about it, augmented is to add. Okay, so they're adding to reality. So if you've seen some of the videos of the Vision Pro, they're basically like sunglasses, so you can still see the world around you. And then they use that screen to overlay technology that is embedded within the, the reality that is the real reality, at least that we find ourselves in, okay? Versus virtual reality is think of it like a helmet that lets in no light whatsoever and it's all a screen, it's all virtual, and it's not adding to reality, it's all virtual reality, right? Now both are gonna exist. There's definitely gonna be video games and whatnot where you're in this virtual reality environment, et cetera, where maybe you're playing a video game and you can barely tell the difference because the technology is so good and the sensories are so good that you can't even tell the difference of reality versus video game. But what is gonna change the world is gonna be augmented reality. Uh, and if you haven't checked out some of the videos on YouTube, go out there a few times and just see the type of technology. And I'm talking about this cool cooking videos, right? where you're wearing a Vision Pro, you're cooking, and you have one timer, which is literally placed directly over the boiling pot of water on the stove with a timer. So that is added in reality, right? You're, you're cooking, you're viewing the stove, you have the boiling water, where do you place the timer? You place it directly over that boiling point of water. Well, you're wearing your Vision Pro, you have to imagine that eventually these things are gonna be like contact lenses where you're not even feeling them on your eyes, okay? Or let alone just some clear glasses in the beginning. You're walking around your house, you go to the bathroom, you go back in the living room, you say, oh, where's that timer? Where's the timer? Well, you go back to the kitchen, it's sitting right over that pot of boiling water, et cetera. So it's gonna be pretty cool, man. And um, I think it's gonna be something that we begin to accept as a mainstay of just normal life as you go forward. Can't imagine what the world is gonna be like when Tommy is, my goodness, I don't even know how old, right? He's three years old now, man. Uh, I just said, you go out five years, good luck. I mean, you go out 10 years, he's only 13 years old. You gotta go out 15 years to where he's 18 years old. 15 years, I didn't have a cell phone until I was, this is the old man speaking, um, like 20, 19 or 20. So it's, and then you think about how important technology is in our lives right now. I'm about to be 44. I didn't have a phone for about half of my life. And so yeah, technology, I mean, we're at the beginning of those augmented reality glasses and that is gonna become a mainstay just the same way the phone has. And it's probably gonna be an extension of your phone to a certain degree. They were having a great discussion on Bloomberg this morning. I agree with a lot of it. They had one of those analysts. Anyway, just like, and I, I can relate because I have a watch right now, okay? And you know what got me to eventually get an iPhone watch, folks, an iWatch? Was the ability to use that watch to take phone calls and do text without the phone itself. You still need the phone, but if you get the watch with the phone, then you can go for a run on your watch, uh, with your watch. You can take a phone call if you need to through your AirPods with just your watch. So that was the big one for me, man. So I got the watch, it health tracked. I was able to use that watch to be out for a run. I'm out for a run an hour, somebody needs to reach me. They can call me, it comes right to me. I can text, I can call, um, all of that stuff. It's an extension of the device. So glasses aren't gonna take away at least for right now, the phone to that degree, but they're gonna complement it. And you're gonna see it happen really quickly, man, because some of the technology of watching those Vision Pro videos is pretty astounding, to put it lightly. So yeah, augmented reality, coming at you. All right, let's check out NVIDIA shares. Back above 800, 802.84, you're up another $14 for NVIDIA shares, up one and three quarters percent. All right, we jump around to some of the other equities that are moving this morning. Domino's Pizza, how about it? 
up by 8% on their numbers. Domino's trading up $35 to 468.51. You jump back to the weekly, we're right back to the 618. Pretty remarkable how these companies have gotten back so much of that pullback, many different equities, right? Even a company like Domino's Pizza that gets cut in half from the highs of the beginning of 2022. And just like that, man, we're pushing 470. The one thing I will say is be a little careful here in that 618. Going to be a critical area. You blow past this area, yeah, you're probably going for the highs of 567. Back there, man, at the end, beginning of 2022. All right, we see what else we got pulled up here. What are we talking about? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about streamers. This one's interesting, man. Uh, I've seen this show, never really watched it. Seen it, heard of it. Love is Blind on Netflix. And it's interesting how the streaming platform is changing. I was having a discussion with my dad this weekend, and we were talking about um, he was subscribing to Peacock and enjoying some of the content on Peacock. I told him I had signed up for Peacock recently for one of the NFL playoff games. Signed up for a month, canceled at the end of that month. And I have enough streaming options right now in the house. I don't think I need pe Peacock essentially. Uh, but what I did mention is that, you know, this is going to become a game. And it's not a game, but it's going to become, at least until there's further consolidation, of you sign up, you cancel. And not in a nefarious way. You just you binge watch what you need to. You cancel. You come out, you come back in. For instance, Peacock gave me the option when I canceled. I think it was only $5.99 a month that I signed up for with ads. They gave me an option about a week after I canceled. And I don't know if this is like an everyone option. So don't go canceling and imagine that you're definitely going to get this offer. That's not what I'm saying. But they are trying to bring you back in the fold, obviously, if you cancel, especially from a one-month subscription. $1.99 a month for six months. So $12 for half a year they were going to give me Peacock. Now, that includes ads. So every person that they sign up, they're still making more money by being able to deliver ads to that person. And then I had Paramount. Now, Paramount, I signed up to stream the Super Bowl, okay, because I don't have cable. Paramount offers a seven-day free trial, folks, right now. If you haven't tried Paramount, you can sign up. You have seven days. You can cancel, pay nothing, okay, I canceled within that seven-day period because I really just wanted to use it for the Super Bowl. They immediately came back to me and gave me the offer. We'll give you one more free month. No questions asked. We don't even charge you. You got your free seven-day free trial. You were going to cancel. We give you an extra 30 days. I said, okay, I'll take the 30 days. I'm probably going to cancel. But guess what? I was going to cancel anyway. So they're right that they really didn't give up anything because now the chances I subscribe are greater than zero. Right? I haven't canceled yet through that month, and I probably will. But you see how what you're going to do is you're going to cancel, get pulled back in through promotional signups, and cancel. Now, where is there a wrinkle that the companies can capitalize on the need to always be signed up for something? Well, there's two different aspects of that. Live sports, okay? Live programming is like the holy grail that you need to be there for live. And reality helps with that as well. And Netflix, pretty interesting. Love is mine. We'll talk about some of those numbers that they're doing on reality TV. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome, folks. We got the S&Ps up by four points. All the markets back in the green right now with the S&Ps up by four. NASDAQ 100, we're up about 30 points. That's about just more than one-tenth percent. Dow up by two-tenths percent. Catches a bit on the open there. Up 86 points. You see the run on a five-minute basis. We're up about 100 points off the open. Dow is in the red on the open. We're up by 87 right now. 39,278. And the Russell participating to the upside as well. Russell up by five points. That's a quarter percent to the upside. We check on some of the equities with some action this morning. We mentioned Domino's Pizza. They're up by about 8.3%. Domino's raising their dividend by 25%, and they're increasing their buyback program by an additional billion dollars. Not bad, that company continuing to rebound off the lows, as we talked about earlier. And NVIDIA shares, they get back some of it, oscillating right around that $800 price point, which puts them right at, puts them right at $2 trillion. NVIDIA shares up by almost $8, though, to seven ninety five sixty one. And we were talking about some of the streamers, you jump to Netflix, up a quarter percent right now. Disney, up about three-tenths percent right now. You jump back to the story that I was talking about. So in 2020, Netflix released a new reality dating show. Now, reality TV folks, most of the time, listen, we all have our uh, whatever, whatever, what, you know, sometimes it's internet scrolling, right? Whatever your, your mind-numbing relaxation at certain degrees um, some people enjoy reality TV. I am not a fan of it. Some people aren't a fan of sports. Okay, that is a form of reality television. I think sports is like the best reality TV out there because it's the those those raw emotions. But that's why people like reality TV, raw emotions, real emotions to the certain degree. That's why people love high level sports. Right? You work all year for the Super Bowl, and it comes down to two plays at the end of the game. It comes down to everything. Uh, but nonetheless, the numbers are pretty remarkable in terms of how much they spend on content, right, and how this one program launched in 2020, they put 30, in, 30 men and women, and they don't let them see each other, right? You're blocked by a wall, and then you have to find love without seeing somebody. That's the premise, okay? The six season's out, and it's literally, they call it the crown jewel of the unscripted offerings. Now, they don't have reality sports yet. That's an unscripted offering as well, okay? But the latest season, uh, U.S. most watched TV chart last week, new season regularly in the top 10, okay? They don't 
measure viewership the same way as linear TV in terms of Nielsen or anything like that. But seasons two through four were the top 10 most viewed shows in more than 50 countries. That's the most remarkable thing, how they push it out to every single country. Viewers crashed the service when Netflix attempted to host a live reunion for season four, if you recall that. The stock bounced right back. It was no big problem, man. Uh, they are going to get that right. And that was the part I wanted to get to. They're going to take these shows, okay, that are not aired live, and they're going to have live features about the shows okay i've seen it happen um in terms of even in my household okay how these shows you have whether it's a reunion whether it's a tell-all okay whether it's whatever it is in these shows um nonetheless you see the acceleration they've had and this is going to become an integral part of these companies making sure you keep people signed on in perpetuity and you don't allow them to go through that cycle. So what are you going to do? You're going to have a couple services that you just subscribe to. They're always available. Netflix is probably going to be one of them, okay? Netflix is probably going to be the one to start things off. But that's going to be the battle that you're going to see happen because otherwise there's too many services. There's too many good deals. I've seen it start to happen in my household myself in terms of Paramount, Peacock, two outstanding services, man. What's the program on Paramount? Is it Yellowstone, I believe? I got to watch Yellowstone at some point. At some point, I'm going to go down the Yellowstone rabbit hole, right? I've heard amazing things. I'm sure it's an amazing program. I don't have the time to watch that much television, folks. Probably takes me six months or a year to watch any potential program in terms of the number of programs, right? I'm re-watching uh, Peaky Blinders right now. I haven't seen seasons four, five, and six, I think. I've seen the ones before that. Man, that's a great, great, uh, great program. Thomas Shelby. Watch out for Thomas Shelby and those Peaky Blinders, folks. Yeah. Okay, let's talk, uh, let's talk a little bit again, because the yen factors into the gold contract, of course. We got some action this morning. You got gold down about $12 right now. Down about half a percent to 2037. It is pretty interesting when you look at gold, too, in terms of not quite performing the same way. You could have had an A to B to C formation. You see gold making a low somewhat in comparison to the market. You got to run up to 2152 in December, and things have changed since then, though, as you have the gold contract at 2037.60 this morning, down $12. But we jump over to the dollar yen go a little bit shorter term time frame and man seems like we're bumping up against an area right 15190 was the high back there in November we're all the way back to 15070 we've been here for a period of about 2 weeks right now in terms of February 13th was that acceleration high up to 15087 we're within about 20 pennies of that price point 15069 right now for the dollar yen up by 17 and what this article is talking about is the traders hoping to profit from large swings in the dollar yen may be in for a rude awakening as the currency pair risks being trapped between rising intervention odds and U.S. interest rate bets, okay? Now, what they talk about is the one-month implied volatility on the dollar yen, a measure of its expected movement, of course, over a period, may fall to its lowest level since March 2022. Fueling the, that decline is the pair's narrowing daily trading range, which is due to those two forces, okay? Dollar yen appears to be caught between, you have the Ministry of Finance threatening intervention on the top side, okay? While the Bank of Japan talking down the chances of rate hikes is supporting the exchange rate on the downside. They're in trouble, man. Uh, as in, that's a tough one to get past, right? One month implied volatility was as high as 8.14% last week. Yeah, and you got, you know, now here's here's where things you want to get forward looking, okay? The pairing back of the Federal Reserve rate expectations following the strong inflation data, okay? So it's saying the recent trend that U.S. rates have risen, okay, is limiting the downside to the dollar yen. The largest daily range last week was just 0.75 yen, okay? But that's not going to be the case going forward if you go out months, folks. I mean, you got to look at this chart right now and imagine that you're probably bumping up an area that is an area of resistance, right? You don't have to be a master technician. And it doesn't mean this stuff is going to always work, okay? But look at this chart and ask yourself, 
if you're a buyer or seller at this price point. And naturally, I think you'd want to go to selling. Now, we don't have volume on this chart, okay, on currencies. Doesn't mean you break above this, then yes, we could have dramatic problems. But this is why, this is the area that I enjoy as a trader, because at least your back's against the wall, as my dad would say, all right? You have your trading area. You're going to know if you're right or wrong pretty quickly, man, okay? You start breaking above this area, your assumption's wrong, period. Because your assumption is you're bumping up against an area that's been prior resistance. You're going to sell that area. You're going to look for a trade lower. Doesn't mean it's always going to be the case, okay? But nonetheless, that's right where you sit right now. And on the prospect that you have a Federal Reserve coming into March, stating that everybody is pretty much on board, that we're going to begin cutting sometime this year. You're only talking about nine months, man. Three to six months go by very quickly in a market as the market is forward looking with the yen right now. Positive yet again, though, 150.69. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P up by two right now. NASDAQ up by four. Dow up by 95. All the markets in the green. We jump over to the VIX right now. VIX, volatility index, back to a 13 handle at 1391. We jump around to some of those companies with action this morning. Domino's Pizza up by 9% now. You jump over to NVIDIA. They were up by 
what, one and three quarters percent almost. You're up only five dollars. You're up by about seven tenths percent for NVIDIA shares right now. We jump to some of the equ other equities with their numbers this week. Macy's will be out with their numbers tomorrow. Macy's basically flat. We talked about Salesforce, man. Salesforce, yeah, they're up by 2.1 percent. They have their numbers on Wednesday. Salesforce, they'll be out with their numbers on Wednesday for Salesforce. Some of the other companies we got, we also got Paramount I talked about. So we still got some companies. I mean, we got over the ones that can really drive the entire market, but we still got some big companies. Salesforce will be one of them, of course. Paramount will be out with their numbers on Wednesday as well after the bell. You're up by 1% right now for Paramount. You jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery. Tough week for them last week. You're up by about four tenths percent. We jump over to Disney shares up by about two thirds percent as well. What else do we have? Yeah, those are some of the bigger ones in terms of Salesforce, Macy's, Paramount. You got TJ Maxx out there as well with their numbers uh, this week. So we still got some companies coming out with their numbers. And Domino's kicked that off today to the upside. You got to love when you uh, have a dividend increase and you get a buyback for a billion dollars added to the initial plans. All right, we jump around and see how some of the other equities. Tesla shares. Catching a little bit of a bid. Tesla up by 2.5%. You put this thing on a weekly, though. I'd be careful, man. 200 is a critical area for Tesla shares right now. You can see that that was kind of the area that was resistance back there in the beginning of 2023. That's where you got support for that October run. And you've just been chopping around. And that could easily be a consolidation. And keep in mind, folks, if you get Tesla run down to about $100 a share, Elon might have a short squeeze going on. And it's not a short squeeze. He might have a margin call, I should say, going on. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Richest man in the world is going to have access to capital. Okay, but you do not want that becoming part of the conversation if you are long Tesla and you are trading down to an area that you might have to have Elon liquidate his shares or put up more capital. We'll finish the program like that. NASDAQ gets into the red as we wrap up the hour. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman's coming up next. Live programming all day. My dad's back in the saddle at 4 o'clock as well. 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock today. My dad. Have a great one. We'll see you tomorrow.